In 2017, an investing revolution began. It was not started by young guns though, but by an industry titan, the world's largest alternative asset manager, Blackstone. A company that invests billions for large institutions like pension funds, insurance companies, and a few billionaires. But it had never offered a product to private investors. And that changed everything. You look like, you know, an actual human person. The type of assets the fund would invest in was also a total surprise. Non-traded REITs. That's a murky area of financial markets that regulators had criticized and they had even published investor alerts. It's my fucking company. Most serious investment firms decided to stay away from it. Yet today, Blackstone REIT Fund, BREIT, is the biggest contributor to Blackstone's revenue. It's the largest fund of its kind. It has over $70 billion in assets. It's leveraged, so it controls over $120 billion in properties. And it generates over $1 billion in annual fees for the firm. It was a bold move that required visionary leadership and execution and brought great success. The kind of move that maybe only Blackstone could pull, even if others would follow. We're going to explore the rise of Blackstone's REIT fund and why this brilliant fund is currently in a dark spot with the help of an expert, Phil Back, the CEO of Armada ETFs, a firm that specializes in REITs, but public ones. But we're talking about BREIT, that's the Blackstone REIT, uh, which is a private fund of non-traded REITs. So, like I said, we know these properties. We, we think they've done a very good job at selecting properties and managing properties. When Blackstone entered the market, it brought all its expertise, its sales force, and a simple pricing structure of 1.25% management fees and 12.5% performance fees. They describe the fund as an all-weather portfolio that delivers attractive tax advantage distributions and capital appreciation. The performance of this fund has been great and where we stand today is kind of interesting. There are times to be someone. It's high tide. Performance drives flows and the fund has become bigger and bigger and today, this fund is now standing on the edge of a cliff at a precipice, right? And not through mismanagement, the opposite, right? Through their success, they are in fact a victim of their own success. So it's like B REIT has become so big that it has carried the whole market. And now it potentially has to sell. How did that work? Well, Embedded in this fund is a lot of leverage, and they have raised a tremendous amount of assets, $68 billion, right? And they own about $120 billion worth of real estate. And they've had so much success and so many assets coming in that they've been buying all along the way and all along at the top. And, you know, while interest rates were, you know, artificially suppressed, really buying at not only peak valuations, but peak low financing costs and, and everything else. But that year stopped. Today, the FOMC raised our policy interest rate by a half percentage point. We continue to anticipate that ongoing increases will be appropriate in order to attain a stance of monetary policy that is sufficiently restrictive to return inflation to 2% over time. In addition, we're continuing the process of significantly reducing the size of our balance sheet. And the market turned very, very quickly, right? With the rising rates and inflation and, and everything else, the commercial real estate market especially really froze up and liquidity kind of disappeared. So the market overall started going down, but magically, the net asset value, the NAV, or in other words, the valuation of Brit, stays flat, almost totally, perfectly flat. And therefore, selling doesn't look like a bad idea. And the redemptions came very suddenly, more suddenly than they expected. And that's where the private nature of Blackstone's REITs really start to matter. Private, so REITs... You know, people mostly think of them as publicly traded. They're companies, essentially, that trade on the exchange. And that means that you get a mark to market, you get price discovery happens in real time. Someone's willing to buy it. Someone's willing to sell it. They trade. That's your last price. And then you have that every day. That is not happening with private REITs. And the distinction only becomes important when you want to sell. Buying is not a problem. And if you have redemptions, so people trying to get out of the fund and people trying to get it, great. You can offset the two, right? No big deal. What happened here was all at once you had the redemption request, you had 
inflows are drying up because people are now concerned. They didn't have enough inflows to offset the redemptions. They own a lot of commercial CMBS and different liquid vehicles that they can use to provide liquidity, but they didn't have enough. And what you do in that situation, like they own the properties, they just sell the properties. And then they can use the cash to give people their money back. But they found what everyone in the commercial real estate market knows, which is that liquidity is almost non-existent now with financing costs all of a sudden so high. So they've been unable to meet liquidity demands for a while now. It gated the fund, which means that you can't get your money out. You can get out now 5% a quarter maximum. Every time you put in a redemption request, they fill a little bit. You got to resubmit every month, resubmit, resubmit to try to get your money out. Good morning. At the end of 2022, the fund was reaching a crisis point. I have an announcement to make about wrongdoing at Waystar Royco. There was a lot of press talking about it. And there was a risk that it could damage the reputation of the firm as a whole. The truth is that my father... That's when Blackstone pulled the most incredible trick. Saw their plan, and my dad's plan was better. Some have called it Hodder, in reference to the scene in Game of Thrones, where the heroes are saved by the sacrifice of this big guy, Hodor, that's blocking the door. They incentivized University of California to invest $4 billion in this fund. They gave them a preferential waterfall return stream. I mean, it's, it's outrageous and that might work for a little bit, but what happens next quarter? This was quite extraordinary. This is the kind of deal that I've never heard of before. And if you're a retail investor in this fund, your money's locked up and you don't have the preferential treatment. I wouldn't be very happy with Blackstone. You're telling me that I can't get my money out and you're, you're incentivizing new people to come in with a better deal than I get. Talk about this fund is democratizing, you know, access to, to real estate. That doesn't sound very democratic to me at all. Okay, everybody, just be casual, relax, smile. It quieted the press, so we don't hear so much about it anymore. Sure, I get the cheekbone. Talked about how publicly REITs are traded on the exchange and your price discovery happens every day. What's someone willing to buy it at? What's someone willing to sell it at? They're fairly liquid, very clear what these things are worth. The publicly traded REITs have gone down 20% over the last year, and these private REITs are up. They're up, according to the appraisers, according to what Blackstone is putting out. This was supposed to be choreographed. And Blackstone is collecting a fee, 125 basis points on the NAV. The higher the NAV, the higher the fee. There's a 20% delta right now between where these things are being marked on their NAV and where they should be based on public market comp. That's about as choreographed as a dog getting fucked on roller skates. So how does the story end? Now you can say that, well, Blackstone is so smart, they're really good at managing properties, but are they 20% better? That is an imaginary cat. Now, could you please fuck off? After clearing a 300 basis point annual compounding fee difference between the private REITs and the public REITs, that's simply inhuman. That's simply not possible. There's nobody that could do that. Buffett couldn't do that. How do you think the story ends? Is there going to be a happy ending or are we going to see a lot more drama?